welcome back to the V8, which is so close to being stabbed into the front of that car, I can taste it. I'm not going to lick it, that's disgusting. But it's very close to being in the car soon. So what I need to do is, as I identified at the end of last episode, take this thingamajig off because it needs not to be here and put that, which is probably just out of shot, uh, P6 torque converter and the um, P6 flexi drive plate. I called it a uh, flywheel in the last episode because I'm used to dealing with manuals and they have flywheels and I, the automatics are a dark, twisted wrongness to me. So um, that's why I said the wrong word. So I'll remove this monstrous heavy thing which crushed my finger when I was trying to put it on. It fell off the back of the engine, crushed my finger and it is still swollen and bruised I think like two or three days later. No, two days later, it's Wednesday and I did that on Monday, it's two days. Honestly, I'm losing track of time, I've no idea what's going on right now. Yesterday, I uh, chatted with Ian Hubnut in the morning online and then I spent the rest of the day, I meant to come out to the garage, but I wound up um, painting the shed instead because honestly, uh, sometimes you need to do a break in your routine. And I've done a lot of youtube -y stuff in the cars the last few days, and it's nice to just do something different. And the shed looks good too. And we have this ridiculous dog kennel, um, which needed painting too, which, when you picture a dog kennel, I don't know about you, but my imagination immediately goes to Tom and Jerry. Something about that wide, about that tall, little pointy roof and an archway in the front. When, when my wife said she was gonna buy a dog kennel, it's going back about 15 years to our first dog, um, I, that's what I pictured. And I thought, oh, that'll be cute, it's a little red roof, it'll be sweet. Um, when the guy turned up to deliver it, he said, where do you want it? And I sort of pointed to the back of the kitchen and he said, <laughs> don't you want to use a door anymore then, mate? And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, what? And it turned out she bought an X-Display dog run, not a dog kennel, without realising it, because it was so cheap, because it was X-Display. And yeah, it's, it's three times the size of the shed, it takes up most of the garden, and it's, um, yeah, it needed painting as well, so that looks nice too. It's handy for dumping wellies and stuff in when you come back from a walk, but the dog never uses it because we're worried about the dogs being stolen. <sighs> what a good use of space. You can park a Fiat 500 in it, actually. That would be a good use of space. And it's off. Right, okay. Thanks to the people who pointed this out. I was missing the core plug uh, blanking thingy majig from the back of the um, uh, camshaft. I hadn't noticed I'd forgotten to put that in. Um, I think because when the engine was machined, uh, the machine shop put that in and I forgot to do it when it came back. So I'll have to see if I can find one of those um, imminently. Right, so to go and order up one of them. In the meantime, get this thing out. Eight millimeters, everything's eight millimeters on these. And everything else is 13 millimeter. That's tight. Ouch. Now this is a good way to smack your shins with something hard and metallic. I'm gonna regret this very soon. I can now spin these little puppies out. These smell of old engine oil. So I wonder if that's from the old, it's old life in the Range Rover that I can get a whiff of. Aha, right, okay, so we now have that to look at. Now we have some exquisitely machined scrap metal. And that to look at. So that spacer ring sits on the back of the crankshaft here. This is the back of the old three and a half litres one. Uh, when you're using a manual gearbox with a regular flywheel, you don't have a spacer, it just goes directly onto um, the back of the crank. This is the actual core plug that is in the old three and a half litre block. Up around here. This is the back of the 4.6 litre crankshaft with a stud I've got to remove somehow. And this is the lack of core plug which I will be fitting as soon as it arrives. And this is the spacer that sits on here. Right, so I've just pulled this little spacer thing which is the old fashioned equivalent of this massive spacer thing off the back of the old three and a half. I'll just um, move the camera around to that in a second because that engine is quite hard to move. I just need to pull this little lug out because um, that is preventing that from going on there. But in a second, I'll be good to go apart from that plug which I cannot find. So I'm going to have to order one of them right now and then come back shortly. That's really annoying. I hate being stuck on a job by absence of parts. Bobber. Right. I have been on the internet and I have bought um, 
a core plug and a spigot bush and I've actually paid more for next day delivery than I have for the actual parts themselves. So they are winging their way over from Birmingham as we speak. Let's put that there. Everyone remember I put that there so I don't lose it. Um, so hopefully tomorrow morning I can get those two bits, those two tiny, tiny parts installed, which I can't believe I didn't have or haven't got anywhere in the garage, and uh, then I can carry on. In the meantime, I'll try and get this out. Now, I looked on the RPI website, and their instruction was cut it flush, which sounds like a terrible idea to me, but they do know what they're doing. However, other people have said pull it out with mole grips, so I'm going to give that a bit of a, an attack. Well, no amount of wiggling, hitting, mole gripping, and yeah, general fist waving would do anything to free this thing off so it is time to get medieval on its ass with a drill try and drill out enough of it to then in some way break it off and get it flush not ideal but we'll have to do it well i managed to drill it out and hammer it flush and it hardly took any effort at all that's pretty good because I've managed not to damage the uh, crankshaft and I've got a nice flat surface for it to bond to and in case I forgot to mention it before I put the tape over it so no swarf would go winding up inside the crankshaft and now I can put this on here and not lose it. Hurrah! Let's see, no effort at all. Now while I was having a bit of a tidy up looking for the um, core plug which I haven't got, I did find this bit of cardboard which I made, you probably can't read any of this because I can't and I'm right next to it, um, when I stripped the old three and a half litre down I wrote down where every single nut and bolt on the front plate came from. So I can put, uh, instead of having to wait on shiny new bolts uh, that may not turn up because it's of the current world we live in, I can use these old ones and uh, they'll hopefully be all the right ones I need to button up the water pump properly. So let's try and work out my sketchy diagram. The sketchiest sketch you ever did see. Now, there's no gasket on this right now, but if I can just dry fit these just to work out which one goes where, I'll be halfway to happy. I want gloves for this. This is gross. I've managed to get bolts in most of these screw holes on this thing, but uh, I think I'll still go and buy a nice new dress up set for it because it will make it far prettier. Now we just sit and wait and wait and wait. Right, it's the next day and I have in my hot sweaty mitts this exciting package which came all the way from Birmingham. And then it should be a live reveal. Da, 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 da. There we go. A core plug and a spigot bush. Core plugs are relatively easy to fit. It's a bit of smoochy goop to go around the edge just to give it a good seal. Let's try and keep it off the back. I'll wipe it in a second. Yuck some more. You don't need much, just enough to give it a waterproof or oilproof seal. Bizarrely outside you may hear many sounds of gardening and that kind of DIY type of thing because it's a Saturday. It doesn't make a lot of sense because every day is Saturday right now. So make sure it's clean. It's no longer clean so I'm not touching it with a grotty finger. Line it up. Get yourself a nice big socket. I'm going bigger than that. There we go, nice big socket, the 32 millimeter. Good old tap. Jobs are good. I just realized the camera wasn't rolling when I fitted the spigot bearing. Basically, I froze it in the freezer last night so that it was a tiny bit smaller. I don't think it made any difference, to be honest. A block of wood over it to sort of soften the uh, blows and a wooden mallet again to soften the blows. Tapped in nicely. Now, this does kind of signify significant progress at last. Flexi drive plate day. Uh, does this matter which way this goes? Uh, chamfered both sides. Um, I'm going to go with no. Well, actually, that chamfer's bigger this side than that side. Yeah, I think that fits nicer that way. And work out uh, the whole pattern because let's get the GoPro on that. If you look down here, you probably can't see this, but 
these six holes are staggered so you can only fit this one way around. I'm not sure what the advantage of that is, but I'm sure there must be one. They've done it for the best part of 40 years. So that's now lined up correctly. So all I have to do now, uh, he says, like it's gonna be easy, is to line up the flexi plates and this little washer on the back. And we are good to go. So the big gap appears to be up near the top. Whoops, don't rotate. Don't pivot, don't pivot. To paraphrase Ross from Friends. Yes, that must be it, otherwise those would be going sideways right now. So these are 50 pounds feet of torque, which is approximately 70 newton meters. And so if we give these old clunky clicks, or not if the uh, thing turns, I thought this was gonna lock on the floor. Let's see if the bent screwdriver can take more or less than 70 uh, foot pounds newton meters. No, that's a 70 foot newton meter screwdriver. Well done, Stanley. Okay, we have a mounted flexi plate. So our engine is now ready to accept the gearbox. Someone made a comment which sounded really sensible. Fit the uh, torque converter into the box first of all. That'll make it much easier and safer on all the components to um, not knock into the right places, wrong places. However, once you've done that, you can't actually get your fingers up to line things up properly. So I think I'm gonna have to do it the hard way and install the torque converter onto the drive plate. But I've got this now set up so that this is on like the north, south, east, west, and this is as well. So as long as this stays in the same relative position, it should slide back in easily. Fingers crossed. I'm starting to wish I'd taken these oil lines off. They really are in the way. I'll make life easier. Because right now I keep moving this thing around and nearly snagging it. That makes life an awful lot easier. Now, are these the right height to line up or not? No, the engine is too low. How am I going to do this? Now, one of the many fun things about doing automatic gearboxes is you have to have the torque converter ideally with some oil in it before you refit it or fit it in the first place. This has still got most of its oil in there. It splashed a little bit out by accident. So that's enough. And there's going to be plenty of oil in the gearbox. So as long as the car runs in neutral or park, I should say, it'll drive the pump and fill the torque converter. And it could probably do with fresh oil in the gearbox anyway, so I'll give that a change before we uh, go any further. Right, now then, how are we gonna do this? Right, so I've got this resting on a one inch thick block of cork. Because I've measured the difference, it's about an inch between the height of these two things. So this should just slide up. Go on, get on there. I can't even show you like a nice GoPro shot of this because I can't see anything myself, never mind. I'm not hiding stuff, I'm not showing stuff to you. I can't see it, even me. And I'm here. Okay, so that needs to be, oh, do you know what, that's eggs. Those pegs are in virtually the right place. Let's see if we can do this. The most of the weight of this gearbox is actually in that torque converter. And the rest of it is pretty light, to be honest. Whoops, oh, the runs away from me and, oh dear, can we get on there? Nearly, yes, we're on. First time in about two years, this car has a gearbox. In answer to my uh, question to myself in the last video, yes, I could find the vaults. They were on the bench, thankfully. Yes, this is looking very much like an engine and gearbox, because it is an engine and gearbox. Sometimes I shouldn't talk. So now the only things left to do are the starter motor and the sump, and I can't do either of those until I get the engine lift out 
and raise the thing off the ground. And once that's off the ground, it's not going back, which means it's time to get the car out the garage for the first time in a long time and get this thing in the engine bay. Yeah! Wow, this garage has not been clear like this in a very long time. I should probably sweep the floor while I can. Oh, it's a surprisingly heavy car, even without the engine. Right, with it up in the air, I can actually talk these to 30 foot pound of torque, which is handy. I just cleared out, there'll be room for my sea kayak. Thank you for all your support. Sea kayak? Look at this empty garage, there's room for a new car in here. <sighs> that blanking plate can go back on again. And this bit is very important, this is the oil pickup, so I'd say it's quite vital actually. I've just found a lovely box of clean nuts and bolts, or bolts and washers, that came off this engine, or the old engine, and uh, went through the, um, what do you call it, the hot wash at the engine building place. And I've been trying to clean stuff up with, you know, gunk and toothbrush. I didn't know I had a box of this lovely, fresh, ready to use stuff just sitting in the uh, box of parts. I can't find a torque figure for this, so I'm just going for quite tight. Five of these little, um, what do you call them, tiny, tiny bolts holding this little baffle up there. Working upside down is never easy or fun. Note to myself, don't forget to get an oil filter on this engine before I turn it on. Or indeed put oil in it. Right, one thing left to go on now, well two things, the sump and the starter motor. And it says to put a bit of jointing compound, or this stuff, around the timing cover area, so down here. Oop, don't swing on top of me. Just a tiny smidge. My workbench is gonna look so empty after this all goes on. Right, this will be fun, upside down on my own. Oh, first mark on my lovely new paint. Jointing compound off my fingers. Oh, almost, but not quite. Uh, that's counterproductive. That didn't help. Right, now the last thing to do before this goes into the car is refit the starter motor. Oh, this is a heavy thing to hold with your left hand. Right, so now the sump is on and the engine is more uh, stable and virtually complete. I'm going to take these straps off because they're not very well secured. They're just okay for hanging it while I bolt the sump on, but now I can strap it around properly so I can get it into the car. But first I'm going to quickly borrow the lift and put the old three and a half litre block onto the other little trolley so that I can actually move it around the garage more because that's quite annoying. That is much easier. Now that um, old three and a half litres on a little dolly, I can shove it into the corner. If I need it out, I can get it out again without having to break my back doing it. I've got a ton more space under there. I can put the compressor, the welder, all that kind of stuff that can live under there. I won't have to keep tripping over it every time I come in and out the garage. Brilliant. Now then, we've now got some insane logistics to do because the car is too close to the garage to get this thing out. The other engine goes in the other end. So, I have to push the car forward up a hill with no engine, push this thing out onto the rough ground, push the car back into the garage over that ridge, and then try and put this in from the front. What could go wrong? On my own. This, this exact wheel here, this is a timing wheel off the old V8, three and a half litre, which has got plastic teeth on it. This is the reason all this is happening. You cog, you cog. Right, so I'm putting this thing out as far as it will go to make it a bit easier for myself. If I go down to a half tonne, this is 
well under a half ton. I hope. We should be fine. This will be an interesting task because this is definitely a two, possibly even three person job and there's only one of me. I think I'm going to have to move the car forward off this little blocks and work out how to get it back in the garage again in a few minutes. <sighs> this is really hard on a floor like this which is not easy to roll the engine on. Oh god damn. Oh, this is tricky now. Now I need two hands. This is suddenly turning into a bit of a um, Italian job moment. Oh, the car's moving. The car's not meant to be moving right now. Okay, that needs to go quite vertical now, otherwise it's going to catch on those pipes. I need to go forward a tiny bit. I need to go up now because I'm just breaking the slam panel. Damn! Can I clear now? Yes I can. Alright, so... Tip it back some more. Let's catch on the anti-roll bar. Okay, we've kind of cleared, now cleared this bit here. There you go social distancing engine installation one-handed on a V8. There is one thing I forgot to install on this engine though after everything else that went on here the last you know, few weeks, months, days, years. I didn't put the engine mount blocks on the side of this engine block that came off the three and a half litre. There's nothing for these to screw onto. Mm. I might just rest this on cardboard for the night and go and have some wine. These, these were on my to-do list for so long. Idiot. Brilliant, so this thing is finally back in the car after way too long. So it's virtually done now. All I need to do is connect the prop shaft, speedo cable, fuel lines, accelerator linkages, water pipes, fuel lines, radiator, uh, make sure the box are of the timing cover, gasket on for the water pump, um, power steering, brakes, air filters, all the wiring, starter motor power. Yeah, I'm virtually there really. Yeah, tomorrow morning I'll have it all done by, by, by 11s, is, I would think. Maybe. Anyway, I think I've gone well today. Um, I need to go and take the engine mounts off the other 3.5 litre engine because I forgot to put them on there, which is why it's resting on this uh, big paddy thing here. Uh, but meantime, I've earned some Lagavulin because I've worked hard today. Stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.